Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be working on rehabbing a got stall that I found a while ago, a long time ago at the flea market. I got her for $8 and you can see she is absolutely filthy disgusting, but she was a really good deal because she is one of the older um, white bodied got stalls. And so I thought you guys might be interested to see my rehab process, um, what I'm going to do to get her cleaned up and fixed up and, um, you know, just get her looking nice. I have an entire pile of project dolls that I haven't um, touched in a while. And so I thought today would be a good day to get started on some of that. The first order of business with this girl is she needs to be cleaned, but she's also super floppy. You can see her legs are just kind of flopping loose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disassemble her completely um, to clean everything and work on everything. Her wig is also really messy. You can see it's kind of like coming apart here at her head. And I'm, I'm debating right now whether to remove the wig and try to rehab it or to leave it on her head and try to rehab it. Um, but we'll see what happens as I get working on her. She's got a little bit of um, coloration issue in that eye. This eye looks good though, but you can see here that's like separating there in the pupil. Um, but so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take her dress off. Now, something that I'm gonna do with this dress that I, I don't really, I don't, I guess I don't recommend it, but because she was so inexpensive and because it's so filthy, I'm actually just going to wash this in my washing machine. I would say, um, you should hand wash these things. Look how loose her strings are. I would say you should hand wash these things, but I just, it's so much work and I hate hand washing things. So I am going to toss that one in the washing machine with a load of other clothes on gentle. Um, this is all attached. But this is her original dress, so you can see um, there it's labeled, and it's just, it's really filthy. So I'm going to get that washed in the washing machine, but in the meantime, I'm going to disassemble her. So um, I'm going to take her, turn her around, and you look, she's got the long, flat neck strings, which is really desirable if you know about American Girl collecting. Um, the original American Girls were on these bodies, so this is the same body that the original American girls are on. So if you recognize it and you were wondering, that's why. Um, and the very first three American girls, uh, Kirsten, Samantha, and Molly had this exact body, the white body with the flat neck strings. And so people, and that's really desirable. They changed the color of the body when Felicity came out because Felicity had those low cut sh uh, dresses the way the colonial dresses were and the 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 um the cloth needed to be flesh toned i think i need a tool to help me undo this knot so let's just uh let me go grab that i'm back with my hemostats which are super useful for unknotting things so let's and you should be careful a little more careful than i am when you have the doll face down just because um, vinyl does get rubs on it. And her face paint actually looks okay. Um, it's fading some, but for the most part, you know, she doesn't look like she has any major dings on her face. So I need to be careful as far as not damaging that. Finally got the knot loosened up. Um, that part's really tough, or can be really tough, if you have um, difficulty with fine motor skills like I tend to have. So I'm going to try to just get her um, head off now, loosen it up out of this body. And when I first got her, oh, it's still not completely undone. That's the problem. Now it's loosened up, so the head just comes right off. So the problem now is how loose these strings are. And there's a couple things you can do. So I can totally unstuff the body and remove the stuff, which is what I think I'm gonna do just because her limbs are so dirty and she's so loose. Another thing you can do is you can kind of 
tighten it as is but I, I don't want to do that because it really um, it's really she just really needs some fresh strings I feel like so I'm pulling all of her guts out as you can see and I'm gonna reserve the guts for later <laughs> it's like a recipe reserve juices for later I'm gonna reserve these guts for later um, so we can put them all back in let me make sure the strings are still there the body itself is surprisingly clean and I think that's because she was wearing that dress the whole time it seems like the dress has never um, come off of her so that's good um, because I, I don't want to try to clean the body with everything else and I don't think I will clean the body with everything else um, so you can see how this is we've got the cup and tension things and I so there's two things you can do here I could pull this tight and then tie it and that would be an easier route to go but I am going to go ahead and just remove it and I'm going to do a whole new stringing for her so I need a sc I need scissors so I can cut this off so I'll be right back with those back with my scissors so I'm just going to cut this clamp off the end so that the cup and everything comes off and I've got some other clamps that I'm going to use um, to reassemble her so don't worry about that part now like I said it is easier just to pull this and tie it but because I want to clean everything I'm just going to go ahead and totally remove it so that's garbage we're going to toss that in the trash but we're going to save her tension cup and then you can see there's another tension cup inside. So what I'm gonna do is I'll use a hair dryer to heat this up and then I will be able to pull, I might be able to do it without heating it, but I think I'll need to heat it because you can pull the other tension cup out. Um, but this can be a little brittle, so I am gonna heat it. I'm gonna heat the edge of the arm to get those out and I'll show you guys how I do that in just a minute. So let's remove them all. Uh, just for the process. Now, I haven't rehabbed, like I used to rehab American Girl dolls frequently. I haven't done that in a long time. So um, this is gonna be an interesting journey for me to, to go through since it's been so long since I've done that. Now we gotta remove more guts to get down to her. Um, the hardest part, honestly, or not the hardest part, but the it's getting the body restuffed the way it was stuffed after you do all this. That part can be tough because sometimes the body just doesn't look the same as it used to. You know what? While I've got everything out, I'll go ahead and wash the body too. Might as well. I will hand wash it though. I'm not going to toss it in the washing machine. Oh, what's in there? There's something interesting there it's like a piece of leather interesting so who knows what they were just grabbing up at the factory stuffing in these dolls at the time so let's see and um she her dress is tagged i believe west germany let me take a look yep west germany so that gives you an idea of the age of the doll besides the fact that she's got the white body um, the West Germany is you know indicative that she's older so it's gonna remove these limbs as well got to be careful not to cut these strings because that kind of like really messes up the value so I got the limbs off I've got a hollow body now so this is a completely hollow body I am going to give it a hand wash um, in the sink oh let me get the tension cups out whoops where's the other one hmm oh it's over here so I got my tension cups, which you need to go on the inside. And then this one's kind of warped. Um, but that's not from me, that's just 
the way it is. But I'll give this a hand wash just to make sure it's clean. Now the stuffing I'm not going to wash because that might ruin it. The stuffing's got all kind of weird stuff in it though. It's like, it's like dryer sheets and stuffing. Whatever. I guess, like I said, they were just using whatever in the factory. So I'm going to run grab the hair dryer and show you guys how I remove the tension cups from the limbs. Back with the hair dryer so I can get the tension cups out of the limbs. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to heat um, until this gets more pliable. And then I'm going to use my hemostats and pull it out. I'm going to um, fast forward. Like I'm going to make the video go quicker through this part so you guys don't have to sit for a long time. But just know that I'm speeding this up so it will take you a little bit of time to get these heated enough to remove the tension cups. All my tension cups are removed now. I'm just going to throw out the old string. But you can see now how filthy, nasty these limbs are. They're really awful. But removing them from the body makes them much easier to clean. The whole process itself is not much easier because obviously I'm going to have to restring. But um, being able to remove them is going to make the cleaning part much easier. I'm still debating about what to do about the wig. I may try to wash it on and see how that goes. I'm also going to use a little bit of fabric softener on her hair. Some people really strongly advise against that, but this wig is practically like, I mean, it's in rough shape anyway. So I'm going to wash it and then maybe treat it with some fabric softener and we'll see how that goes. Um, but I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I don't, removing wigs is so hard when the, on these dolls because they're glued down so hard you almost every time I've done it I've had a really hard time not like trying not to ruin the wig so it might be easier for me to try to style it on okay so I'm gonna get started on the cleaning now nothing fancy here I just use a magic eraser and I use some FOCA which is a cheap cleaning laundry detergent um, I use laundry detergent to clean a lot of vinyl stuff so I'm gonna get some hot water and soak my magic eraser really well. And then I just kind of add some FOCA to the magic eraser. I mean, that's not very scientific, but um, just kind of get it nice and soapy. And then I'm gonna scrub these down. So here's the before, super filthy and nasty. Now that I'm gonna rinse it, I'm gonna try not to get water into the hole there. Um, just because it takes longer to dry out. And that's it for the first time. I don't know if you can see the difference in this lighting, but how much cleaner it is than this one. So now I'm going to scrub up the other vinyl bits, and then we'll dry them, and then we'll move on to the head. Okay, they're all washed up now, so I'm just going to dry them, and I'm going to kind of put a little bit there to just make sure I didn't get any water inside, because I, what I don't want is I don't want there to be water inside, and I'll hit it with the hair dryer again, um, just to be sure the inside's dried out. They came really nice and clean. I was actually able to get all the spots off, because there were a lot of spots on it. Um, like crayon, it looked like crayon marks or something, but none of them had actually stained. So that was nice that it came completely, um, free of marks. So looking good. 
I'm really pleased with how clean they look. Magic Eraser is absolutely incredible for cleaning vinyl. Now, when we go to clean the face, though, you're going to see it's a little bit of a different story. You got to be, you can't be as cavalier about it. You have to be much more careful because Magic Eraser will take the paint off lickety split and you don't want that especially on a doll well i mean if you're gonna repaint it you do but i'm not planning to repaint i want to preserve preserve um so this is all dried up so now let's go get the head and start working with it okay next up is her head and so her head is in really bad shape but i'm going to show you guys a trick that i'm going to use because what i don't want to do is get water inside the eyes and the reason you don't want to get water inside the eyes is there's a lot of reasons. It's hard to dry. The eyelashes are glued in. And you don't want to get that glue loose. Um, some of these eye holders are made of metal. I think these are metal. You can kind of squeeze it and see. And you don't want to rust that metal out. So what I'm going to do is I have cotton balls. And I'm going to put a cotton ball over each eye and then tape it down. Now, at the end, I'm going to have to do some really careful detail work around the eye as far as cleaning. Um, but for now, this will keep them, um, this will help to keep water out. It won't do a perfect job. I'm still going to have to be careful. But it will at least um, help me prevent some of it from going in. It'll be some sort of barrier against um, the water and the eye. So there's one cotton ball and I'll do the other eye. And again, this is not perfect. This is just, um, a bigger piece of tape this time. This is just a method that will kind of help me out here on the road to getting her cleaned up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the hair washed. And so that's kind of like, um, Trying to get all the hair out of the tape here. I tried not to get it in there, but it got a little bit, but whatever. So this hair is a mess. So I'm going to wash it first um, with my Foca in the sink. And uh, I might let it soak for a little bit. Um, actually, I'm going to wash it and then I'm going to get a little bit of uh, fabric softener and let it soak for a little bit. I'm going to use warm water, um, not hot, but not cold. And I just find that, that, you know, it could cause shrinkage and it could cause other issues, but I just find that it tends to get more dirt out. I mean, it just tends to get things cleaner. So I'm going to wet the wig really well. And you, earlier I said, you know, I wasn't sure if I was going to remove the wig or not. Kind of decided not to. I want to see how it turns out first like this. If it turns out really poorly, I may order a new wig for her, or I probably have one in my room that would work. I'm just kind of liberally sprinkling. Um, I'm going to plug the sink up and just kind of scrub this hair in the sink. Um, try to get it clean because she, like I said, she was filthy. I'm going to get some of this soap on her bangs again trying to still be careful around the eyes because even though those cotton balls are there, I mean, they're not watertight. They're just a helpful barrier against water. So let me kind of get some soap in these bangs. I'll stop that. Just scrub it out. And sometimes I can't tell if the water is actually super dirty or if it's just the color of the detergent but it looks kind of I don't know if you guys can see it looks kind of dirty right now which is good I mean I want the dirt to come out because this doll as I keep saying was super filthy now while her hair is kind of laying here I'm going to do a little bit of work with the magic eraser on her face but because she's blushed you have to be very careful. Like, I'm barely going to touch over those blush spots just because I don't want to rub any of her blushing off. So this is very carefully. Now, you can see how dirty that edge just got just from that because it was not dirty before. Um, so right now, clean. And now, lightly, very lightly going around these parts. And... 
See how dirty? She's just really, really dirty. I'm gonna lightly go over her lips. Just wanna be so careful with that paint because I want to preserve as much of her original paint as I can here. Um, and once I take the tape off her eyes, I'll of course go around her eyes a little more closely and her nose because her nose is kind of covered up right now but lightly and it's still taking dirt off because she was just poor thing was really well loved because she was really dirty and see even going around here on the back of her neck there's a good bit of dirt okay I think she's gonna wind up looking way better. All right, so I'm gonna drain the water out and then I'm gonna rinse this hair. I'm using, like I said, warm water. Another thing is I try to hold her down so that I don't, any water that I might accidentally get close to might go out a little or roll down okay her hair is very well rinsed so the next step is going to be some fabric softener I've got some fabric softener here. Now the move I'm about to show you guys is a little bit controversial, which sounds kind of funny when you're even talking about something like this. But some people say that fabric softener will mold on the doll and will ruin the doll's hair. I haven't had that experience personally. I have used fabric softener before um, in a doll's hair and it has never really done that for me, but I always rinse it really well afterwards too. I don't leave it in. Um, the thing about it for me is this wig is already pretty much trashed. So, you know, anything that I do to it is not going to be any worse <laughs> than the situation that it's already in. So, any improvement on this, like if it's a potential improvement, is worth it. So, what I'm going to do to start is I'm just going to fill the cap um, with some fabric softener. And I'm going to be very liberal with this. I'm going to put it directly on the hair and um, then I'm gonna kind of rub it in with my hand because I want it to be in there good. Maybe I'm gonna add a little more because her hair is really dry, really, really dry. A lot of times if you see people, like I used to be very active in American Girl Trading Boards and you know, et cetera. And one of the big things people would ask about older dolls is, is the hair dry and brittle? Is it, this hair of this doll is dry and brittle. It is very dry, it is very brittle. Um, so now that I've kind of soaked the hair and the fabric softener is all in the sink, I'm going to add water. So just, I'm gonna add a little bit of water and I'm gonna stop the sink up. Sorry for the jiggly camera there. I'm working by myself here. I'm gonna add some water and let her soak for maybe 20 30 minutes so i'm going to plug it up and just a thin layer of water enough to well probably not thin thin but i want it to get um i want it to cover her hair so that it can kind of sit and marinate um with that fabric softener in there now i didn't add any to the bangs um Maybe I'll scoop a little here. Do this. Just to get. Because again, I don't want. And this is kind of the thing where, you know, removing the wig could be better because you don't have to worry about it getting in the eyes. Now I'm going to add one more scoop just for good measure. Not a whole scoop. I'm doing. You know, I'm using a lot. I mean, I'm using more than I would use for a load of my laundry. Um, but, you know, that's the 
I want her to really come out with some nice silky soft hair and we will have to trim the ends so even though the hair is going to get nice and soft uh, the ends are going to most certainly need to be trimmed so we're going to leave her soaking here for a while um, and in the meantime I'm going to wash the body now I'm in my other bathroom um, with my pink sink which is like from when the house was built and I'm going to give this a light wash with um, some Foca and I'm not gonna soak it. I'm just gonna give it a very light hand wash because I don't feel like it's all that dirty to begin with. And I just am, you know, just washing it to kind of get any dirt or crud out. And you can see how, you know, I just kind of, <laughs> I'm not, you know, super detailed about this. I just wanna get it cleaned up since I have it loose, might as well do it now. Um, and it's a nice day outside so I can take it outside uh, to dry out on the deck um, in the nice weather. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to do that and then I'm going to rinse it clean. And that's it. And so with me having washed this, I will likely not be able to actually restring her limbs on or reattach her limbs until tomorrow because I want to be sure this is extra extra dry before I do that um but that's okay these things take time you know if you want to do it right it takes time and people would probably say I should take more time doing the washing and rinsing part but for me you know this is this is where I want it so I'm gonna um you know kind of stretch it I don't want to wring it because um, I don't want to misshape the body. So now that I've just given it a wash, I'm going to take it outside uh, and let it dry. Okay, so she has soaked long enough and my whole entire house um, smells like fabric softener now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rinse it out and then I'm going to brush her with a wig brush. Um, just to see. I want to rinse it out really well because kind of like I was telling you guys before, you know, people say that, that, um, the fabric softener, sorry, I lost my train of thought. The fabric softener can leave, um, can get moldy over time, which again, like I said, I've never experienced, but I am going to rinse really well in hot water, uh, rinse it out as best as I can. But hopefully, you know, it just did enough to condition. The hair feels a little better. It doesn't feel like a new wig or anything, but, you know, anything's better than nothing. So just kind of rinsing. All right, now I'm going to brush it. Um, just kind of very carefully. I'm going to put it up on the edge of the sink. And... Okay, I've combed through a lot of her hair and there's these pieces here that look like they could have been cut or they're part of her bangs and I can't really decide which it is, but I can move them to the front and they kind of cover this bald spot and they fit in with her bangs. So I think they're part of her bangs. Now I've also got a flat iron out, which I use on a low setting um, and I use it to kind of smooth the hair out. So I think this wig is salvageable. The ends are pretty dry, but the flat iron does help um, with the frizziness of that. And it helps smooth, like I said, just smooth things out um, and get them looking a little silkier and smoother. So it really, really helps in that regard. As a matter of fact, I never flat iron my hair. The only reason I have a flat iron is for doll hair. So it's definitely worth investing in one if you're going to be rehabbing dolls a lot. Now some doll hair can't take heat, um, but generally I have good um, 
results, especially with wigged dolls, because the hair is a little bit higher quality. And you can, but again, I'd use a, a low setting. And you'll want to test a little bit of hair first before you just go right in for the kill, because um, it really can melt hair. So you got to be really careful with that. But what it does is it helps seal or lay down these ends that are more, um, and I like to use it damp. So her hair is still damp after soaking, and it, I find I get a good result that way. And I also find there's like less risk of melting when the hair is just a little bit damp. Those are just my findings. Um, you should definitely test the hair first if you're gonna use a flat iron, and just be really careful as you do that. Now this is actually easier to do when the head is on a body because you can hold the body between your knees and then do all this, so I'm kind of, um, doing this the hard way a little bit, but the hair did actually did come out okay, so I'm pleased with that. These bangs, I'm going to have to try to get them to lay down, so I think what I'm going to do is put a, a, um, a bobby pin in there. As a matter of fact, I've got one right here, so I'm going to put a bobby pin in to try to make those lay down on top of her head um for now so that i can get them going the right way because i'm gonna just kind of smooth those in with her bangs so i i don't think it was cut i think it really was probably part of her bangs but if it was cut it's like it blends in with the bangs so that's what it's going to become a part of so i'm going to go touch up around her eyes now that the cotton balls are off and get that cleaned up and then we'll go from there Okay, it's day two. I'm back. My body's clean. It's dry. I've got all my limbs clean and dry, and I am going to reassemble this stall. So just to show you kind of what I need, you need these little, um, these little clamp things. You can get them at the, um, like Lowe's is where I got these. I'm one short of what I need. I had a bunch of these at one time because I used to do this all the time. I have seven of them right now. I really need eight. And you need some string. The string that I have is a little bit too thick. But, I mean, it's not too thick. It's just a little thicker than the original. You can see here. Well, maybe it's the same. I think it's just a smidge thicker. I just kept this one to show you guys kind of how this works. So, I've got the string. I've got my clamps. And I am going to get started on restringing her. Uh, so the way that the soft body dolls are restrung is you cut a length of string and then you're going to use the tension cups. One's going to go inside and then one's going to go on the outside in between the leg and the um, body. So let's go ahead and get started on reassembling this girl and you're going to need your hair dryer again too because when you go to put the tension cups in um you need the hair dryer for that so i'm going to start uh i always like to cut a little bit more string than might be necessary because um to give myself space to kind of play with i guess so i'm going to cut that should be more than enough for her leg and i'm I'm just, you could be really, um, like you could really measure it out or whatever, but I'm not going to do that. So there's one for her leg and let's go ahead and do it. So one tension cup's going to go inside like this. So what I want is I want to put the, the stringing through and then I want to secure it, um, with one of these. And in order to get that secured down, you need to pinch it closed with some pliers. I have some needle nose pliers here. And you want to make sure this is really nice and tight. Um, so it doesn't come loose later. So let's see if I got a good... So I'm just kind of pulling on it to be sure it's on there good. And it's moving just a little. So I'm going to see if I can clamp it. A little more okay and there we go I've got it pinched on there really tight and pulling it's not moving so that's what I want so now I've got to put this 
back into the leg. But in order to do that, I'm going to heat this up. So once it's warm and pliable, you kind of just force that in there. And now you got your tension cup in and your, um, you got your string on the outside. So now pay attention to what side of the doll you're looking at. The back is where the neck strings are. So this is the front. So this leg needs to go here. So I'm going to thread this up through the body and we're going to repeat this kind of process. So I'm going to pull the leg onto the body. But now what I need is I need a tension cup on the inside of the body. So it's going to rest up against um, this part of the body. So I'm going to, and I want it to be tight because I want this to be a good, um, like I want the, the limbs to be tight on the doll. So I'm going to put a tension cup on like so, and then I'm going to pull it kind of tight and I'm going to thread my one of these on and then pull it again kind of tightly hold it and then I'm just gonna with my pliers I'm going to clamp it and there we have it the leg is reattached you can also if you want to you can add a knot um, just for security they don't do this in the factory a lot of people don't do this but I just kind of like to add one on top. Um, I don't know. It's just, I guess it might be a weird quirk of mine, but I like to add a, a knot in there. So I'm going to kind of um, knot on top of that like so. And that's just, again, that's just a quirk of mine. I like to do that. It's not necessary, but I don't know. It just gives me extra confidence that everything's going to hold in place. So I'm going to do it one more time. Um, here. Pull it tight. And then, so I've got, now I've got the knot on top of the thing and the leg. Um, it's hard to tell how tight that is when the doll's not stuffed and you can't really but that should be pretty good. So now I'm going to trim some of the excess. I'm not going to trim it all in case I ever have to open her back up. Um, but I'm just going to kind of trim. There we go. Trim most of that off. And I just left a little bit of slack there. So now I'll repeat with the other leg. Okay, now that I have both legs back on, I'm going to start to stuff, restuff the doll just to make my life easier. So I kind of tried to remember which stuffing came from which part of the doll, which is probably like really, I don't know, OCD. But I'm going to stuff as much as I can back into the doll's body, but giving myself space um, to attach the arms. And you want to make sure the little rump gets filled out again, but not too much. See, that like might be too much. So, stuffing dolls is kind of an art because <laughs> you want to make sure the body is like, kind of like, it. because see right here, I'm like missing some. Here is okay, but then her butt is, that's probably about right. It can, you can use, um too if you if you're not able to get your hand and all the little crevices you can use like a chopstick or something to help you or you can use like your hemostats to kind of help you spread some of the stuffing into some of the little corners um, like of the legs and stuff so that the doll is stuffed evenly I've 
got enough stuffed in there now, I'm going to go ahead and attach her arms. And we're going to use the exact same method with the arms. Just going to cut a length of um, cording and add a tension cup. Add a clamp. And I'm putting the big end uh, to the cup, in case you're wondering. So like the big end with the loops there, I put that with the cup against the cup and then clamp it. Then we will heat the arm. Now I'll put it through the body. It's the exact same process as with the legs. So put it through, get it attached. We're gonna get another tension cup here. Another one of my clamps. Pull this tight. And I'm gonna clamp it. So you may be wondering what I'm going to do without another clamp here. I'm just going to knot it. And I'm, I put it on the arm up top so that next time I go get some clamps, uh, it'll be easy to open her back up and um, add the clamp to it. Because it'll be at the top, not the bottom where the legs are. So I'm just going to pull the tension cup um, really tight. And then... I'm going to tie as close and tight of a knot as I can. This part's probably, so this one's probably going to be pretty loose compared to the other ones, but I'm just going to do um, the best that I can to get this to stay in place for now. Uh That seems to be okay. I'm going to leave the string long on this one so that I can come back and fix it later. So I'm just going to tuck that down inside. Now I'm going to finish stuffing her. Okay, so I've restuffed her. I think she looks pretty good. She's got one little lump on her back, but maybe over time that'll smooth out. Maybe not. I don't know, but it's not bad enough for me to um, unstuff her and restuff her because that part's really hard. But the limbs are nice and tight. So you can see this one's a little looser, but this one's nice and tight. It's t this one's tight enough. Um, she's not flopping like she was in the beginning. See, that arm's nice and tight. This is the one I knotted. But it's nice and tight, too. Uh, it's a little... You see that? That's from the... From the... Um, well, no, that's fine. So, that's her done. I'm going to put her head back on now. Now, to put her head back on, I think I'm going to have to put her between my knees. We'll see if I can do it all on camera. Um, but that part is a little tricky because you want to get all the stuffing down in there. So I'm going to put, let's see if I can do this on camera for you guys. Put the head in and then, yeah, I'm going to have to hold her between my knees so I can tie this. So I was pulling her strings too hard and I snapped the string, which sucks. Um, I'm just going to pull it apart here. I pulled it out completely and I'm just going to knot it and then <laughs> hope for the best because one of the really important things with these dolls is having those 
um, flat white neck strings. So I'm going to see if I can get this threaded back through her neck curl. So I'll just say, uh, if you're doing this with the older strings, be really careful because I absolutely, it just, it popped right in half. So I need to try to figure out if I can thread it through the neck hole here, which is going to be tough, but I'll see what I can figure out and I will let you guys know. Okay, I've got her head reattached. Um, I was able to preserve the long neck strings. I was able to use a little um, safety pin and it was actually a lot easier than I thought. I just clipped it to one end and I was able to pull the string through and my knot that I made in the string is right here, which I think is where it broke from. So it came out pretty nicely. One's a little bit longer than the other, um, but I ended up having to have my husband help hold her head down while I carefully tied it because I think that was the problem is the stuffing was pushing up on the head and so when I was trying to pull it tight, it would just keep pushing it out. And so that's why it didn't come out. So she's totally reassembled now. So the next thing I need to do is I need to cut her hair because it's looking pretty bad. So right here you can see the ends of her hair are, um, there's some that are a little scraggly and you know, you saw me use the flat iron and stuff to try to trim, to try to make this look nice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trim some of these unsightly edges. Um, just to try to get it, you know, looking a little decent. And I'm not going to do much <laughs> because it always makes me really nervous. Um, I think it's uneven here. There's a wave in the top of her hair. So I think she might have had at some time like a, kind of like Samantha the American Girl has. I'm thinking she might have had like a ponytail here because this wave sort of won't lay down. I think that might be why this could be a little bit uneven um, back here. But otherwise, looking again, um, cut a little bit of that off. And like I said, I don't like to go too wild with the scissors just because I'm just trying to trim up the really awful ends. Um, But I am going to salvage this wig. I'm going to keep it on her because I think it came out okay. So, um, yeah, I think that looks good. So, all in all, she is pretty much back together. Um, I'll need to maybe work a little bit on her bangs. You can see her bangs are kind of, they're still a little rough. But she is back together and she's cleaned up. I'll have to clean up her hair there and I'll show her to you guys once her dress is clean and on. All right, she's done. I'm really happy with how she came out. The dress came pretty clean. I think it looks great. I added some American Girl tights and a pair of American Girl shoes that I had on hand and she's just absolutely adorable. Her one eye is damaged. You can see it's, um, and some of these older eyes do that and for some reason it doesn't sit quite right in her eye socket but that is beyond the scope of what I'm willing to repair. Uh, I think she's lovely as is and so I'm going to leave her this way. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and if you decide to rehab your own doll I hope some of my tips were helpful. I am by no means a professional but these are things that have always worked for me and give me a doll that is satisfying and that I can enjoy and so I'm really really pleased to have one of these vintage West Germany white bodied girls in my collection now just really thrilled about it and she's going to be happy here in her new home so guys if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up if you made it all to all the way to the end here thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video bye bye